I'm telling you, it gets sweeter as the days go by, don't it? This walk with the Lord gets sweeter by the days go by. If you have your Bibles this evening, I want to turn your attention to 2 Samuel chapter 21. 2 Samuel chapter 21, verses 15 through 22. I'm going to speak to you on giant battles equals giant victories. How many believe that tonight? Giant battles equals giant victory tonight. How many think they're facing some more giants in their way? How many think they got a giant before them tonight? Well, I want you to know he's still God tonight. Amen. I want you to know he's still the same God. Amen. How many fighting battles again tonight? You fought and you fought. Let me tell you, he's still the same as he was yesterday, today, and forevermore. But let's look right here in 2 Samuel 21, beginning in verse 15. Boy, I've been ready to preach all day. I'm ready to preach Sunday, too. (laughs) Amen. Moreover, the Philistines had yet war again with David. And David went down and his servants with him and fought against the Philistines. And da- David waxed faint. And Ishbenob, which was one of the sons of the giant, the weight of whose spear weighed 300 shekels of brass in weight, he being girded with a new sword thought to have slain David. But Abashi the, the Zerite succeeded, secured him and smote the Philistine and killed him. Then the men of David swore unto him, saying, You shall go no more out with us to battle, that you quench not the light of Israel. And it came to pass after this that there was a bat- again a battle with the Philistines at Gob. Then Sabachi the Hushirite slew Saph, which was one of the sons of the giants. And there was again a battle in Gob where the Philistines, where Elinah slew Jeragum, a Bethlehemite, slew the brother of Goliath, the Gideon. The staff of whose spear was like a weaver's beam. And yet, and there was yet a battle in Gath, where it was a man of great stature, who had on every hand six fingers, on every foot six toes, four and twenty in number, and he was also born to the giant. Him some big old boys there, wasn't he? <laughs> And when he defied Israel, Jonathan, the son of Shema, the brother of David, killed him. These four were born to the giant in Gath and fell by the hand of David and by the hand of his servants. Heavenly Father, we come before you tonight, Lord, and we lift you up, dear God, and we ask you, Lord, to just touch, dear Father, Lord. Lord, we pray, Father God, Lord, that you just move in a mighty way. Lord, anoint me to speak your word tonight, Lord. Lord, we ask you, God, to just move, Lord, and have your way, Lord. And I pray, Lord, tonight, God, that you just move upon this sanctuary. Lord, that they get the mindset of victory. Lord, that they get the mindset, that those that are facing the giant, that those giants are coming down. Lord, we lift you up, dear God, and we praise you, Lord, for everything. In Jesus' name we pray. And that we all say amen and amen. And First Samuel, we know the story of David and Goliath. We all come familiar with that story, how David slew the giant. Now here in 2 Samuel 21, we see some more giants come along the wayside. I know scholars have debated who these was over time, the relative of Goliath or brother and the brother, but I want you to know it don't matter how they were kin to Goliath. The fact is they were still giants right there, amen? They were still a big obstacle in front of them. Uh, We see Ishbenad, uh, we see Saf, we see the brother of Goliath, uh, and we see the six-fingered and the six-toed man. Uh, Let me tell you, just like David had fought that battle of the giants, uh, let me tell you, we're fighting giants tonight, amen? Uh, How many know we're fighting battles tonight? Uh, How many know we're fighting a warfare tonight? Uh, In verse 15, right there and moreover the Philistine had yet war again with Israel and David went down and his servants with him and fought against the Philistines and David waxed faint let me tell you what I begin to get a picture of 
I begin to get a picture how the saints of God are in a spiritual battle tonight. Anybody believe that tonight? I, I begin to begin to see how that devil likes to come back every time we send him a running. He'll show up again somewhere along the wayside. Paul told us in, in Ephesians 6 and 12, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. It seems like when you study the Old Testament, it seems like Israel was in constant conflict with the Philistines. Anybody ever notice that? They'd get defeated one time. Guess who would come back again? Here would come those Philistines rearing their ugly heads again. Amen? Let me tell you tonight, how many know that's the way that old devil does? He, we listen, every time that he, we send him a packing, he likes to come back again. It tells us tonight that we're in a constant conflict, that we're in a battle tonight, that we're facing a warfare tonight. Let me tell you tonight, we may have had one victory, but let me tell you, there's four more victories that still need to come, amen? There's four more victories that still need to come. This battle is an unceasing battle that is taking place. People want to know what's going on in our nation tonight. I'll tell you what's going on in our nation. It's a battle of good and evil. It's the battle of heaven and the battle of hell, to put it in that terms tonight. It's an unceasing battle. It ain't going to cease until the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords returns again. It ain't going to come to a halt. It's coming there. It's coming there. It's coming to a climax. But until it comes to that climax, we'll find ourselves in a battle. Anybody know what I'm talking about? We'll find ourselves in a war. We'll find ourselves wrestling. We'll find ourselves a fighting. Amen? Why do you think Paul told Timothy? First Timothy 6 and 12. He said, fight the good fight of faith. That word fight right there in the Greek comes from the word from agonize. Paul sees the Christian's life as a fight. Anybody believe that tonight? Anybody know what I'm talking about? An intense struggle that requires preserving in the faith. What he's talking about. He said, you're going to have battles along the way. You're going to have obstacles that come along the way. You're going to have troubles that come along the way. It's a spiritual warfare that's coming tonight. People tell me the devil's fighting them. I'll tell you, you better be glad the devil's fighting you. I'd be more worried if he wasn't fighting. Amen? Amen? Y'all get quiet on me right there. People don't like to fight, but if you're going to serve the Lord, you're in a fight. If you're going to be a child of the king, you're in a fight. I'm getting started. Don't worry. But people don't realize the agony, the travailing that we go, the Christian fights in this warfare. It's a constant battle. It's a constant fight right there. And we've got to be in that constant battle. We've got to be ready to go to the war. We've got to be ready to fight, agonize. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Anybody ever been through that trouble where they're agonizing? Anybody, let me tell you, let me just jump ahead a little bit. The devil's come to steal, he's come to kill, and he's come to destroy. He wants to destroy your fate, he wants to kill your joy, and he wants to take you to hell with him tonight, amen? But I'm telling you tonight, I'm not gonna allow that to happen. You've got to say, I'm gonna fight to the end, amen? You've got to get that mentality that I'm a victor tonight, amen? You've got to get that defeat out of your mind and say, I'm a victor tonight, amen? You've got to get that mentality. We can't do this and say, I can do all things through Christ Jesus, which strengthens me. Amen. How many know he made you the head and not the tail? How many know he made you the lender and not the barrier tonight? People ain't in it. They think, oh, we don't want to hear about this fight. But I'm telling you in these days that we're growing in. As it gets closer to the end, the devil, I believe, what we call it in our terms, he's working overtime. Anybody believe that? If you don't believe he's working overtime, turn on the news and you'll see what's going on. What makes somebody go ask somebody? 
what party, political party, then start shooting. I'll tell you, it was the devil behind it, amen? And there was not only that shooting today, there was one out in California at a UPS facility, a shooting that's going on. I, I believe they said it's got so bad in Baltimore, Maryland now that they put the police on 24-hour notice a day, all the cops right there with the violence that's filling this land. Let me tell you what we're growing into. We're going into a spiritual battle, amen? Let me tell you what's happening. The devil don't like it, amen? The devil's trying to steal. He's trying to destroy you because he knows his time's short, but rest assured, if you'll endure to the end, you shall be what? Saved. People don't want to get it that we're in this battle, that we're in this struggle, that we're in this conflict that's going on. Just like David was in fight with the Philistines, he began to wax faint. That means he here comes when he began to wax faint. Notice he had been fighting right there. In verse 15, he had been fighting. We don't know how long, but no, I guarantee it was a little while. Because as soon as he had fought, he began to wax faint. That means he began to get to his weakest before you put him down, let me tell you, at least he was fighting. Amen. The reason you wax faint is because you've been on the battlefield. Amen. If you ain't fainting, you ain't getting that like that. You ain't been on the battlefield. Amen. Amen. Listen, he got to that weak point. He got to that point where he said, I've been fighting and I've been fighting. Now, here's where we're going to start wanting to go tonight with this for the next three to four hours. No, just kidding. <laughs> Here's where we want to go. Notice he had fainted, wax faint, and he had been fighting with the Philistines. I'm telling you, it was a fight. It was a struggle. Being on the battlefield will wear you out. Amen? But all of a sudden, as soon as he began to wax faint, who did the next verse begin to say showed up? Here comes a giant standing right before him. Here comes the, what, uh, the giant. Here comes another Philistine, the big man of the Philistine. How he comes right there at when David is at his weakest point. What are you saying, preacher? I'm telling you tonight, I believe that in the life of the believer, the devil will come when we're at our weakest point. Amen? I believe the devil will try to attack us when we're at our weakest point after we've been on the battlefield. Let me tell you, the devil appeared to Jesus in the wilderness at his weakest point. In Matthew chapter 4, verses 2 through 3, and when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward hungry. And when the tempter came to him, he said, if thou be the son of God, command these stones be made bread. Let me tell you, the devil didn't come the first night. No, he waited for 40 days and 40 nights when Jesus in his flesh was at his weakest point. Anybody know what I'm telling you? Sometimes it's at your weakest point. It's when that old devil's gonna send his biggest henchman, amen? It's at your weakest point when he's gonna come your way when you've been fighting and you've been fighting when you've been struggling and you've been struggling here comes that old giant coming on behalf of the enemy amen anybody know what I'm talking about how the devil gets you at his, your weakest point amen let me give you a further example when he tempts somebody he ain't going to tempt you with something you've never had a problem with He's going to tempt you with something you've struggled with. Amen? He's going to get you at your weakest point right there. And I'm telling you, in these battles that we're coming, that's when the devil likes to come. When we've been on the battlefield, we've been through it, and we've been waxing, we've been going down. Maybe it's been when we've been fasting, and we've been struggling, and maybe we've been battling the forces of hell. All of a sudden, here comes a giant. Here comes one of his big henchmen. But I want you to know, no matter how many giants the devil sends are your way, he's still the same God that knocked him down in the first time. Amen? 
Amen. He's still the same God that slew Goliath. Amen. He's still the same one that brought you through it the first time. Amen. How many has went through a battle and it just seems like it's one thing right after another and all of a sudden when you look you say, oh my Lord, what's standing right there before me this time? What do I have to face this time? Well, let me tell you something right now. There's still a name that is above Ishabod. There's still a name that's above all these giants' name. I'm talking about the giant king of kings and the Lord of lords. His name's Jesus Christ tonight. You say, preacher, I'm facing giants right now. I've got a giant battle going on in my life. I've come by to tell you, your giant battle is gonna be your giant victory tonight. Anybody wanna receive that tonight? That your giant battle is gonna be your giant victory tonight. Anybody gonna receive that? Your giant battle is gonna be your giant victory. I'm telling you, God's just saying, here's an opportunity to see me show up. Here's an opportunity for me to come on your behalf. What was that giant coming to do? Let me tell you what that giant was coming to do. He was coming to finish David off. He was coming. He knew that David was wax faked. They knew that David had been battling. They knew that David had been on the battlefield. And they knew he was at his weakest. Let me tell you, they knew something about David. You know why they didn't approach him at his strong point? Because they knew what he'd done before. Amen. David wasn't scared of slow, slew them. Anybody know that? He'd slew 10,000 of them. He wasn't scared to. They knew what he'd done to their, his, their relative Goliath before. They already knew he knocked one down. He took one out. We're going to wait till he gets weak. We ain't going to approach him when he's at full strength. We're going to wait till he's waxing faint. Then that's when he's going to have to get, to, that's when we're going to send our giant out. And that giant they sent out was for one, these giants they sent out was for one purpose. You know what it was? To kill him. They wanted rid of him. They wanted Israel out of the way, but they forgot about the equate. They forgot about something. And I think sometimes you need to remember this. Listen, the devil may think he's got you with the giants he's got in his way, but he's left something out of the equation that changes it all around. You know what he's left out of the equation? He's left Jesus out of the equation, amen? He's left the king out of the equation. He thinks his plans is gonna succeed. I got news for him. He may have a plot, but God's got a plan tonight. Did you hear me? Satan may have a plot against your life, but God's got a plan for your life tonight. Him, you ain't going nowhere that he's done with me. And I said, well, I'll tell you right here. I ain't going nowhere until he's done with me. Amen. That old devil said, I'm going to get him at his weakest. But them Philistines, they left one thing out. They left God out. Amen. Let me tell you, that old doctor may give you a bad report. Quit listening to that report and just hear the report of God. Did you hear what I'm telling you tonight? That doctor may give you some bad news, but I got some good news. You say, what's the good news? Jesus is the good news. He ain't the great I was. He's the great I am tonight. Amen. He said, I'm the Lord that healeth all of my diseases tonight. These giants come to kill you. Seems like when you war one time, here comes another one. But the Philistines knew what David had done. They knew how David had slew Goliath. I guarantee you, it was around their camp. You don't want to mess with him at full strength. He already took out Goliath when he was just a shepherd boy. So we'll wh wh fight with him We'll grow him wax. We'll get him weak. Then we'll come after him. It's just like Jesus said that the thief would come to steal. He would come to kill. And he would come to destroy. Let me tell you, these giant battles that are sent your way, anybody ever went through them? They are meant to kill you. 
They are meant to kill you physically. Yeah. When God wants to use somebody, the devil will want to kill them physically. Before I was even known I was going to be a preacher, there was a prophecy given to her that the devil would literally try to kill me. He has. But guess what? I still stand. Amen. I still stand. Amen. I, I can tell you the times he's tried to kill me. He ain't got it done yet. And I'm not going nowhere until the Lord says I'm ready for you to come home. Amen. So I'm ready for you to get up here. And just to let you know, and when he's ready for me to come up here, I'll be the first one that says I'm ready to go. Amen. I'll be the first one that says I'm ready to be there with the Lord. Uh, but listen, these things are telling you, he wants to kill you physically. But more importantly, he wants to kill you spiritually tonight. He wants you to turn your back on God. He wants you to curse God and die. He wants you to denounce God. He wants your faith destroyed. He wants to kill your joy. He wants to destroy your faith. He wants wants to counsel your assignment that God has got on his, your life tonight. Did you hear what I'm telling you? Uh, did you hear what I'm telling you? The devil wants to destroy the assignment that God has got on your life. Uh, and let me come by and tell you by the inspiration of the Holy Ghost uh, that Satan has tried to destroy the Houston Town Church of God uh, because God has an assignment. Uh, but I've come by to tell you by the inspiration of God tonight uh, that his plans have failed, that his plans have been ruined, that Christ has placed him under his feet tonight. And what he meant to destroy us with, he's gonna turn it into a testimony tonight. Did you hear what I'm telling you tonight? Some of you, the devils went out to want to destroy you. He wants to destroy your assignment. He wants to destroy your faith. He wants to destroy everything about Christ with you. But I've come by to tell you, his assignment, his plot has been dulled and it has been voided by Calvary. Listen, what I'm telling you, you, got, you fight the battle, God will give you the victory. Did you hear me? You hang the course. You stay on the course. He'll see you home. Amen. You stand for Christ. He'll give you strength tonight. Amen. Did you hear me? I'm telling you tonight, that's what that devil wanted to do right there. That's what he's wanting you to do tonight. But I got to tell him about to tell you tonight, those giant battles is nothing more than giant victories tonight. Amen. Haven't you ever heard the old saying, the bigger they are, the harder they fall. Amen. How many know the bigger they are, the greater the testimony, amen? The bigger they are, the greater the testimony. These giants were just another testimony in the wonderful working power of God, amen, to be recorded down throughout the time that we can be inspired that when we fight in giants along the way, guess what? We're gonna get a giant victory tonight, amen? Anybody believe that? Quit being discouraged and say, victory is Oh, that old devil, he likes to send his giants. That giant may come with a new sword. Sometimes it seems like when it rains, it pours, don't it? Anybody know what I'm talking about? When one thing goes wrong, another thing goes wrong. Let me tell you, you just get aggravated sometimes. You ought to see me try to wrap a box. I get aggravated. I couldn't get it right. I finally got it. But I was trying to send Faith her little wagon because she'd been on me for it. I said, let me wrap it up. I'll get it in the mail. Me trying to wrap that thing, I just wanted to throw it away at a point. It was an aggravation. It was like, I said, this is some, this paper's from the devil right here. Anybody know what I'm talking about when it seems like you try one corner and then her corner comes undone? 
Something be, another, you rip, get one place in place, another rip happens. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Anybody know what I'm saying? That devil likes to throw that kitchen sink at you. I want to say, anybody ever had something thrown at them before? I want to tell you, I, they probably won't listen. When I was down at North Carolina, I went to a house to visit somebody. They were fighting. I went through the door. I had to dunk my head because a telephone went over my head. <laughs> I'm serious. <laughs> I went there to try to help somebody. <laughs> I got to the door. I could hear them. I said, I, I said, well, maybe I should. I got to the door, opened the door a little bit. Here come a telephone flying over my head. Gosh, I said, Lord, I know I'm in the danger zone now. <laughs> But anybody know what I'm talking about when it seems like the devil wants to throw something at you? Amen? People say he's thrown everything at me but the kitchen sink. Well, I got news for you. He's going to throw the kitchen sink at you. Anybody know what I'm saying? If he can throw it at you, he's going to throw it at you. But I got news for him. He's still defeated tonight, amen? I got news for you tonight. You're still a victor tonight, amen? I got news for you tonight. I got news for you. He may come your way, but let me tell you, he's still the same Jesus, amen? He's still the same one, amen? Let me tell you, what I begin to notice about this is the same rock that would slew the first giant will take care of the rest of them also. I want you to get, he done it in a different way, but it's still the same rock. He used some people right here, but it's still the same one that done it. Are you noticed that in 1 Samuel 17, before David went and fought Goliath, what did he pick up? Five smooth stones. It would only take one to knock Goliath down. I begin to think about this. Could he been saying, when I get rid of this, and there's four more that's coming on down the way. Anybody know what I'm talking about? For every Goliath, there is a stone. Did you hear me? For every Goliath that you face, for every giant, there is a stone. And I'm telling you, what's so symbolic about these stones? Just a rock. Oh, this rock was a picture of someone. This rock was a picture of the chief cornerstone. This rock was the picture of the one he told Peter, upon this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. He wasn't speaking he's going to build his church upon Peter. He is saying, I'm going to build my church upon me. I'm the rock. Amen. What are you telling me tonight? I'm telling you, the only one was that needed, listen, that the same rock, that stone that I'm talking about in Jesus Christ is the same one that would give them victory here tonight in First, Second Samuel 21. The rock who slew Goliath is the same one who will take down the rest of his family also. Some of you sleep on me tonight. Do I have to keep you here at about 11, 12 o'clock tonight to wake you up? No doubt in my mind that the Lord was helping Abashi, Shabachi, the Hushamite, Elanon, the son of the Jeroboam, and Jonathan. No doubt the Lord had to be with them to take these giants down like that. Listen. How do you know? Let me tell you something about these three. These great feats, I'm going to tell you, of courage of David's servants were because of David's anointing. They wouldn't back down because they knew what David had done. Did you hear what I'm telling you? They knew that their king had already slew one, and they knew the same anointing that relied on them would help them along the way. What are you saying? I'm telling you, it's the same Jesus. It's the same Jesus. David was a giant killer. So those who were come under him, him. We're giant killers also right there. Do we see that tonight? Uh, some of you need to get this in your mind. Uh, that, he healed, that he healed me once. Anybody ever been healed once? Anybody ever been healed once? Anybody else? I want to see your hands. Now, say the same Jesus will do it again. Get that. The same one will do it 
again. He may do it in a different way, but he'll do it. Did you hear me? Did you hear me? The same Jesus who gave me victory before will give me victory again. Amen? What are you getting at? I'll tell you here in a minute. The same Jesus who provided for me before will be the same one who will provide for me again. Amen? The same Jesus who slayed my enemies will slay them again. What are you getting at, preacher? Devil, here's where I'm getting at. Some of you need to shout right here. Some of you are going to have to shout right here. I believe that. Devil, he stopped you before. He'll stop you again. Some of you need to get that in your mindset. He stopped him before. He's going to stop him again. Ain't that right, Sawyer? Some of you need to get it in your mindset. Can somebody get that through their mindset? He's the same. He's the same one who'd done it before. Sister Mindy, he brought you out of a wheelchair. He'll touch you again. Anybody else? He brought you out from where you've been before. He'll do it again. Did you hear me? He brought one giant down. Well, here come four more. Well, I don't care if there's one, four, or 45,000, 45 million. God will slay them all. After all, he took one angel and wiped out 185,000 men in one night. What are you saying? I'm telling you, the devil may be trying to stop you again, but remind him, that he may remind him that Jesus has spoiled his plot. Devil, you tried to get me down before. He got you then. He gonna get you again. Amen. We forget what God has done for us before. People forget what God has done for them before. They forget the great feats that God has done for them. Church, let me tell you, you don't forget what God's done for you before. When he took one giant out of the way, there may be four more coming, but he's got them in his hands also. He just setting them up to be destroyed. Amen, God's got a way tonight. I don't, may not know how he's gonna do it, but I can promise you, the same stone that got Goliath is the same rock that got these. He used it a different way. God don't do everything the same. Anybody believe that tonight? He does it in different ways. <laughs> it amazes me how God does things. Man, I just feel like preaching tonight. Can I have a little while longer? <laughs> There's some of these nights I just want to, don't want to even stop. I just love to preach. But listen, people think, oh, it's over this time. They forgot what God done for them yesterday. God, I said he'd do it again. It ain't a one time and done. He says, when they call on him, he will answer you. Remember Gene, call on him. He'll answer you. Junior, he'll answer you. Patty Junior, he'll answer you. He done it before. Sister Edna, he'll do it again. Amen, he'll do it again. I'm telling you, tell that devil, the same Jesus that stopped you is the same one going to stop you again. All right, devil, you got your roadblock there. Well, I got somebody that's going to plow through your roadblock. Amen. I got someone that's going to stop you. His name's Jesus. He healed me before. He'll do it again. He delivered before. He'll do it again. He's still God. That's what we got to remember. The giants you've been battling have been slayed. Did you hear me? The devil is defeated. His plot is spoiled. You need to say in your mind, I'm victorious. 
Amen. You need to get it in your mind and say, get that mindset of defeat out and say, this giant in front of me, this giant battle that I'm facing is a giant victory that's coming my way. Did you hear me? This giant that stands before me is just another giant that's going to be slayed. Amen. This giant that stands before me is just going to be another giant, this battle, victory, that's going to give a testimony to Jesus Christ. Did you hear what I'm telling you tonight? Some of you need to say this giant is a giant victory, amen? Not a giant defeat, but a giant victory, amen? Did you hear me? It's a giant victory for you tonight. So what the odds are against you in the natural? We don't walk in natural. We walk by faith, amen? We use what David used. He come with a spear and a sword. I come to you in the name of the Lord. Some of you need to get excited over that name. God's got a victory. God's going to give you a victory, amen? The giant in front of you. He, God knew what was going to happen before David even got there. But God already had a victory for him there. See, God's plan was established before David was even existed. Anybody get that? Before you got there. I'm going to tell you something. Give me just a few more minutes. Before you got to this battle, God already been there. And if he already been there, he already got your victory written out. Your, your tomorrow is God's yesterday. Did you get that? Your tomorrow is his yesterday. He's already walked before you. He's already got the path paved. He got your victory in line. Those giants that are before you is now a giant victory. These giant battles you think fight, you're fighting are going to be a giant victory. Why? Because of who that rock is that you get out of hold of. Amen. Anybody ever picked up Jesus? Amen. Amen. Anybody ever evoked Jesus on it? Somebody need to get Jesus in the situation. Amen. Some of you need to put Jesus in your battle tonight. Amen. Some of you need to put the Lord inside of your battle tonight. Isaiah 54 and 17, this is my final point right here. It says, no weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. Notice what he says. No weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. In every tongue that shall rise against you in judgment, you shall condemn Listen to what he says right here. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. And their righteousness is of me, said the Lord. What part of no weapon don't some people understand? When he means no weapon, he means they ain't anything that's going to prosper against his children. Did you hear me? If we hang on to him, He'll backfire these things on the enemy. Amen? Oh, Sam, what was that we used to say in school? I'm rubbing your glue. What bounces off of me sticks to you or something like that. Yes, I still remember saying that in school. One of the few things. I think somebody else used to say that. But in actuality, can I tell you, God could do that. He'll make it what the enemy set out to do to David. Right here. God bounced it off them, David, and brought it on the hands of the giant. The giants were slew. Think about Daniel. Those that come against Daniel had it in their mind they're going to get rid of him. Put him in a lion's den. Well, their plan backfired. It turned against them. Instead of Daniel being dinner, they become dinner. God give them lines a locked jaw or something that day. Or he filled their appetite, shut their mouth up somehow. But when they, he got Daniel out of there, he said, I'll get the ones that come against you and I'll put them in the lion's den. What are you saying, preacher? I'm telling you tonight, your giant battles is giant victories. But you've got to fight. You've got to stand. You've got to allow the Lord to do the work. Amen. Everyone standing in here tonight who would say, I need the hand of the Lord. 
I need the help of God tonight. I'm fighting a giant battle. I'm going to get a giant victory tonight. Amen. I'm going to get a giant victory tonight. Amen. I'm going to get a giant victory. Whatever it is you need. Whether it's healing, whether it's deliverance, whether it's victory tonight. Lord, in the name of Jesus, we're believing, Lord, for a great victory. The giants they facing is nothing now more than a giant victory. Lord, we lift you up. God, victory is theirs tonight. Victory is theirs tonight. Don't hold back. Let God do the work. Don't miss out on what God's going to do. Jesus' name.